Dr. Carson uh, wants to appeal to a lot of people, uh, and apparently it's working right now because he's leading the Republicans uh, nationwide in the polling. Uh, but uh, among those people are African Americans. So now, since he is African American, you would think that he would have an easy time reaching out to them. But of course, since he's a Republican, uh, his policies don't really help the African American community that much. So that's a bit of a problem. And he apparently, and this is the unexpected part, uh, has troubles understanding how to reach African Americans. Because he decided that he should do an ad appealing to African Americans, but do it in rap. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Let's listen. Heal. Vote. Vote. Inspire. Vote. Vote. Revive. Vote. Vote. Being cars in 2016. Vote and support being cars in for our next president and be awesome. America became a great nation early on, not because it was flooded with politicians. But because it was flooded with people who understood the value of personal responsibility, hard work, creativity, innovation, and that's what will get us on the right track now. I'm very hopeful that I'm not the only one who's willing to pick up the baton of freedom. Because freedom is not free and we must fight for it every day. Every one of us must fight for it because we're fighting for our children and the next generation. If we want to get America back on track, we got to vote Ben Carson. No matter of fact, go out and vote. I'm Ben Carson, and I approve this message. But why? Why did you approve it? I said, oh, how should we get black people to vote for Republicans? Oh, I know. Let's rap to them. Oh, I don't know. It sounds enormously patronizing uh, to me and totally disconnected from the community. But what would I know? All right, uh, J.R. Jackson, uh, what's your take on this? Uh, did the rapping appeal to you? Did it all of a sudden make you a Republican? Uh, well, when I heard him in my monster headphones, uh, rose <laughs> I mean, I was like, turn it up, turn it up. vote, uh, <laughs> vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It's patronizing. It's ridiculous. So. so Whenever someone obviously doesn't know what they're doing or who they're talking to and they try, I mean, it happens all the time with politicians that are too old or too removed. Whenever they say they like a certain sports team and everyone knows that they don't watch that sports team but they're in that city, it, it's obvious. So just stop. Don't try it. You're not going to get it that way. Try a different angle. I mean, but it's there's an ego problem. And then so you're like, oh, well, you know, I can. I mean, they're black people. They listen to rap, right? Okay, let's just throw some random raps on you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is an age thing. You know, maybe it's like, I don't know, how do you talk to these people? I mean, I used to listen to country, but I, maybe they, the young people with their saggy pants, are listening to the rap music these days. But look, he's not the first African American on the Republican side to run patronizing ads uh, in African American media. Herman Cain, uh, who was running last time around in 2012, did a very similar strategy. Now he didn't rap, but look at how. He views African Americans in this ad that they ran. Paid for by America's pack. The night's still young. Come on, let's head to the river and try out the slots. Nah, I gotta get home. I promised Kathleen I'd help the kids with their homework. You know, the army really changed you. The war does that. It makes you value what you're fighting for. So I suppose you want me to vote Republican, like you and your soldier buddies. Not at all. You've got no reason to. How's that? Well, you don't work for a living, so what do you care about keeping taxes low? Hey, that's cold. You cheat on your wife, so why would you want an amendment to protect marriage? Hey, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. And I know you're not going to enlist to defend your country. Not everyone's as slow as you are, bro. If you make a little mistake with one of your hoes, you'll want to dispose of that problem. Too sweet, no questions asked. No, right? no, now that's too cold. I don't snuff my own seed. Huh? Really? Well, maybe you do have a reason to vote Republican. Oh, Jesus, man, that's even more painful than the Carson one. Uh, no, I don't snuff my own seed, man. Hey, that's cold, bro. The fuck is that? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. But again, if it was white Republicans who had this image of young uh, black voters, maybe you say, okay, they're out of touch, they never, didn't come from that community. So, but it's African American Republicans that are running these ads. So, JR, again, w what's going on here? Yeah, uh, there's a, I believe, um, well, there's a segment of the population that they're so dis. 
Uh, they're distanced themselves from black folks so much. I mean, they've always thought they were better than black folks because these are better black folk. Um, it's, it's an ancient thought process. I mean, we mentioned it in the meeting about the talented 10th, and it's like a southern-born thing. But it was around the turn of like the, 19th, the 20th century, right, where it was W.E.B. Du Bois. Was, he had essays and was talking about how there's this 10% of black folks that are like, could be the educated ones in traditional education and go, your, go to college, do your books, and all that stuff. And the other 90% are more like the sharecroppers and the industrial workers. And in order to bring up black folks, this certain 10% born are better than the rest, and they kind of have to help. It, it was in a positive light of like, we need to bring up our people, but there's only so many of us that are capable of absorbing this kind of information. So I think, and in, it's now kind of like a pariah type of thought process to think, unless you're still clueless like some of these guys are. And I think they ascribe to that kind of thought process. Well, you know, you know, the 90% down there thinks they talk like, yo, and what if you have a problem with your hoes, bro? So let's try and speak to them because I'm, I'm reaching out to my idiot brothers. It, I don't know. I, again, yeah. I don't know if they ascribe to the talented tent thing, but it's the mindset of that. And originally yeah. it was for, uh, they thought it was a good process, but you know, even later in life, Du Bois kind of changed his perspective on that. These guys didn't even do that. Right. Um, again, the theme is patronizing. Like, I, I made it. I I'm one of the good ones. Uh, but, you know, I I'm going to reach out to the rest of them. How do they talk? They talk in bros and hoes and all this. That actually, is, you're describing white frat boys, but that's a different matter. Okay, so and I'll you know use this condescending uh, message about how you know you're obviously sleeping around on your wife and all these terrible stereotypes that they put into the ad. It's amazing. And for Ben Carson, like I don't I don't know how to speak to black people. I guess you rap to him. <laughs> Jesus, man, get a clue. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. Uh, it's, it, their black candidates sometimes are whiter than their white candidates. Just when you thought it couldn't be done.